Hi and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video. In today's video, we will be looking at using SSH through PowerShell. So this would be used to interact with things like an Ubuntu server like we'll be doing today, or some older legacy devices like switches or access points that might not have APIs on them, but you can actually still interact with them through SSH. But until this point, there might not be a very easy or effective way to actually remote them since you can't use PowerShell remoting simply on them because they aren't Windows devices. So today we will be looking at a cool module that was made by Dart Operator. I'll be posting the link to the module uh, down below in the description. Uh, the only real requirements for this module, um, according to Dart Operator, is Windows Server 1709. Uh, so I'm actually running this on Windows Server 2016 uh, with almost the latest patches. Um, but from what I can see, as long as you have uh, the server 1709, from what I can see, came out the same time as the Windows 10 creators patch. Uh, so as long as you're pretty much up to date within the last year, uh, you should be able to run it fairly well. Um, and it also requires, I believe, uh, dot, uh, .NET 4.8 or above. Um, and it runs on Windows PowerShell 5.1 or uh, anything over 7. Uh, which should be pretty standard if you have a newer uh, Windows server um, or even Windows machine. I haven't tested this on Windows 10 or 11 um, because the documentation did specify server. Uh, so this is actually running, on, like I said, on Windows Server 2016. Uh, but let's actually go ahead and let's get started on how we actually start with Posh SSH, which is the name of the module that he created. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to want to do, uh, like when we have any new modules here, is we are going to go ahead and we are going to install the module. So that is just install module posh.ssh, or dash ssh, sorry. And we are just going to run that. And always make sure that you are running as administrator if you're installing a module uh, to avoid any errors, because uh, you might hit errors if you are not running as administrator and you will be prompted you are installing the modules from an untrusted repository if you trust this repository uh, change its installation policy value by running set ps uh, repository commandlet uh, and then are you sure you still want to install these modules from ps gallery we are just going to say a for yes to all uh, and then it's going to go ahead and install i already actually have it installed on here but i do see that there is an actual update so i'm going to be updating that afterwards if you ever want to update a module, it is simply just install dash module, then the name of the module, and then dash force, and that will update the module. That's very, very handy if you actually build your own modules and you've made a change to the module and you don't see to see like any differences in your scripts, even though the you are running the install module or import module, uh, you might need to use that dash force to make sure that it actually forces that reload of the module. So once we have Posh SSH installed, now of course you're going to need a device with SSH enabled. Uh, so I actually have an Ubuntu server uh, just right here beside me that we're going to be using. So the first thing that we're going to have to do here is create a session to our SSH server. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called session. And then what we are going to do is we're going to make that equal to new dash SSH session and then we are going to use the computer name and this is where we're going to put the ip of the device that we want to connect to so for me it is one uh 172.30.123.14 and we're going to have to pass credentials to it because of course we are logging in through ssh uh, so i'm actually going to put this as a variable called uh, dollar sign creds and we are actually going to be creating that variable very shortly and the only other thing that we're going to need to do here is the accept key. And I believe that should be good. Uh, I might have to add one more parameter here, but let's just go ahead and test that out. So let's go ahead and let's create our creds variable here. And we're going to do uh, make that equal to get credential. So let's run these two commands here. And we are going to put in the username. So my username for this server is just Richard. And then I'm going to put in the password here. All right, so here we are. So it is actually fully connected. We did not get an error message. 
And then in session, here I do have the host session ID and we are connected is set to true. And then if we actually just test this out once more, if we just do um, invoke dash SSH uh, command, and let's go ahead and let's put the session, the SSH session to that as our session variable. And then the command here, let's just put that as pwd for present working directory. So if we go ahead and we just run that here, we are going to see that we are in the home and Richard folder, which makes sense because we that's the user that we logged in as. And then if we ever wanted to remove the session here, just to make sure that we can actually reconnect to it, it's going to be remove dash SSH session. And then you're just going to pass in that session that we want. So we're just going to go like that. And there we are, it passes us back true as it did take it down. If we try to invoke that SSH command, we are going to get an error. But if we just go ahead and we recreate the session, we can see that we do get PWD and we do get our present working directory. So that's perfect. So we've already established a connection to our SSH and we are actually able to interact with the system. So let's see what we can actually do from here uh, to be able to like maybe automate um, or get information off of our devices, um, whether that be a switch uh, or an access point, uh, or in this case, like I said, it's an Ubuntu server, uh, anything really that uses SSH. It could even be a Windows server if you uh, really wanted to use the SSH instead of PowerShell remoting. Uh, that is very much completely an option. Uh, so once we have our SSH command, um, so let's do, so we have our present working directory. Now, what a lot of people might do as well is let's do an LS to be able to see all of our folders and files in this directory. So let's just go ahead and let's invoke that here. So here we can see that we do get a host and then an output and then an exit, ed, exit status. Sorry, it seems to be a just kind of stumbling on my words here tonight. Um, so a good thing that I like to do is I like to either store these as variables uh, sometimes as I will do that. And then what we can do is we can do results.output. Uh, so this completely is really valid. Now, as we can see, we get all of our outputs here. So we can see right now in that current working directory, we have this log file. We have desktop documents, downloads, music. We have uh, a Debian package here, uh, which we saw in the last video. This was used to set up PowerShell. Uh, we have pictures, public, snap, templates, videos, and virtual box VMs. So that is pretty cool. Now, another way to do that here is if we just have invoke the SSH command, we can also pipe that to select and then a dash expand property output and just run this. Now, of course, if you are running this in a script um, and it's gonna be automated, you're probably gonna to wanna to store that into a variable. You're probably gonna to wanna to do some processing on it. All right, so let's keep it in a variable here. And then we're gonna say, we want to actually see what is in the documents folder. Cause we know, um, or in case you guys haven't watched the video, um, when we installed uh, PowerShell, we also created some test scripts and those scripts are in our documents folder. So let's actually do a CD documents here. And then let's go ahead and so I'm actually not gonna store these in results just yet. So you guys can actually see the output live. And then we're gonna do a PWD afterwards just to see where we are to make sure that we actually got into document. Um, so as we can see right now, we are in home Richard and we know that there is a documents folder. So if we do CD documents, so we don't get an error. And then if we do the PWD for present working directory, we are going to see that we are actually still in home Richard. Now this is because the way that the invoke SSH command is built here, it is running as, as if you just did an SSH exec. So it is always running 
from your home directory or your root directory, depending on who you logged in as um, into the shell. Now, I'm actually going to be creating another video here um, later in this series that's going to show you how to actually have a stream going uh, to that SSH uh, session so you can actually use the CD properly. But there is actually a workaround for this. Now, I'm going to actually go over that. There are some missing features that you won't be able to do using this method where the other method will definitely be a very, very big advantage. Um, but in the most cases, this might actually be perfectly fine for the automation that you're doing. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at that. So if we do CD uh, documents, and then let's actually just add a semicolon here and do a PWD. So if we invoke that here, we are going to see that we actually do get home Richard documents. So we actually do manage to uh, go into documents. And the reason why this works is because we are executing it as a one liner. So the SSH exec is actually completely executing this in one go. Uh, so we are actually able to see it. And then if we even wanted to, we can change that PWD to LS. And if we run that here, now this is actually the contents inside of documents. So that is super cool. Now we know how that we can actually uh, maybe like move across directories and actually still be able to execute things directly from the directory that we move to. Uh, and again, we can actually even go a little bit further here and we can do, uh, so we can do ls and then let's do a cat.ps1 here. And if we actually execute this, we will actually see that we get our first output here, which is just um, our ls command. And then we have our uh, cat. And then if we actually do here, we're just going to put this into a result here just to make that a little bit more obvious for you guys. And let's just do a result dot output. And if we run this here, so here is the output of the ls command. And then we have here the actual output from our cat test.ps1. So this could be very, very useful, especially if you're just maybe running, um, maybe you're using this as a penetration tool uh, or just grabbing information. Let's say you are going on a switch and grabbing a configuration uh, that might be often uh, got by like a show run or something, uh, you can easily grab that information, output that to your result, maybe create some sort of PowerShell object afterwards based on it, you can parse it, um, or just grab that config file or that config from the show run to the result and then export that result to a text file to then maybe import on another switch. Uh, there's a lot of options here. Um, and a lot of options for maybe just automating um, the setup of Linux boxes. Uh, since now Linux does have PowerShell, you would be able to use PowerShell remoting, but maybe you have a series of SSH scripts that are already all written uh, to fully configure um, your Ubuntu servers with different, uh, different scripts or just uh, simple batch scripts. You can actually run them completely through uh, this tool and I can actually show you how to do that. So we actually have this script.txt here. So let's say we have a script that we know that we run and what we do every time is we do a CD documents. And then what we do is we run a PowerShell and we run our PowerShell.ps1. And then what we want to do is we want to actually um, go ahead and look at what is inside our etc passw folder, passwd folder or file, I should say. Uh, so let's actually just take a look and see how we can actually run this here. Now, what we know is we need to line up these all these commands with semicolons. So if we have a file which has a bunch of commands that we know that we have to run in that order, what we can actually do here is create a command variable and make it equal to get dash content. 
and we will specify our path and let's specify our script.txt here. So if we do the get content, as we see, we always get a nice uh, uh, output here, which, which each line. Now we know that we actually need it all on one line. So what we can actually do is we can wrap that get content in a uh, parentheses here. And then we're going to add a dash join at the end here. And then we are going to join it with, you guessed it, the semicolon. And if we actually run just this here, we are actually going to see that we get all those lines now all combined into one. And they are now delimited by a uh, semicolon. So now if we actually what we wanted to do is we can do an invoke invoke dash ssh command ssh session session and then command and then we can pass in our command variable and if we go ahead and we run these two lines here we will actually see oh, and then of course what we should be doing is we should be storing our results here so if we run that again with our result.output, what we will see is we will see our script, our PowerShell script ran. So we have a bunch of data here. And then we actually have our content of the past WD file. So again, this could be super, super useful if you have a script. Maybe you have um, some Nmap, a script that you already have, or maybe you have a bunch of files or file locations that you are catting and you just want to get the info from those files. Uh, you can easily use this on those older systems or Linux systems. Now the one uh, downside to this, as you probably guessed it, because there is no real um, shell or stream on this, it is just doing an SSH uh, exec, which is why you can't do a CD documents and then do an LS afterwards to pass it all into one command. Uh, we are not able to actually do a sudo in this case. So if you have to do any commands that are requiring a sudo, um, this will not actually have uh, any way to do that for you. We will actually be seeing that in the next video. Uh, so there is a way to actually create a stream uh, using POS SSH. Uh, so we will see that in the next video. And that will let you also, uh, like I said, run CD documents in one line. And then in the next line, if you do a PWD, you will actually see that you have moved into that folder. Uh, so it is a very much like a live shell or a stream shell. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you guys have any comments or questions, uh, please let me know down below in the comments. If you guys have anything that you guys would like to see specific with this module, uh, I'm already doing the stream. Uh, that will be in the next video uh, where we'll be able to see how to get a shell up and running with POS SSH. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know down in the comments below. And please, uh, if you can, uh, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. I will see you guys on the next video.